Hello, welcome to this new Back on Track series. The song's going to be called Something's Going On. Um, I don't yet know why, but I pretty much never do when I come up with a song title. We'll figure that out later. A lot more synth-based music. In fact, there's no guitar um, at the moment on this song, so that's uh, different for me. And uh, an interesting rhythm that we'll talk about when we've heard what we've got. So let's give it a listen, and then we'll come back and, uh, and have a chat about it. song does actually finish there but as you should hopefully have noticed during the song the two groove agent tracks are completely unprogrammed that's just uh, a four bar pattern I think four bar pattern whatever for, for each of the kits completely stock straight out of the box the patterns are completely stock I have messed with the instruments taken all the melodic stuff out tuned and um, some of the um, the drum sounds that I wanted to be in but were previously tuned to a uh, to a tone that was out of key and I really wanted to start stretching the legs of some of these synths that I do tutorial series for them but very often end up just writing guitar music because that's really kind of my my main love but I do love these synth sounds and the ARP and modular are just right at the top of the tree in terms of synthesizers that are capable of sounding absolutely fantastic all on their own <laughs> You can see I've got um, automation on the cutoff and resonance, just adding extra kind of interest. Mm -hmm. 
it's just absolutely nothing wrong with that sound all on its own just sounds fantastic right out of the box it, it's kind of cheating and this was the sound that I thought right I've got to write a song based on that what a bluff it's just a fantastic dirty nasty nasty sound absolutely love it and so it was on the basis of that sound that I came up with the bass line. So this is in C Locrian. I absolutely love the Locrian scale. It's just so wrong. Like horrible and nasty, but fantastic. So we've not really had an opportunity to talk very much about arpeggios or sequences in the songs that I write so far. So this is a, a, as good a time as any. This, uh, the two uh, sequence sounds, the modular and the ARP, are both providing sequences. So the ARP is this one. And the modular is that colour. Now the modular is just bouncing around octaves. It's not actually producing any tonal colour. But the ARP is, it's making... Um, notes fives and tens the semitone offsets of the of the notes in this sequence um, are so if you're based on c uh, you're going to get uh, c f and b flat those three notes have various scales that you can fit in and just by messing around on the bass guitar i decided that i was going to stick in uh, c locrian so i use um guitar tutor to make these kind of decisions for me so if i've got um Note five and ten, and I know that I'm going to be in C. Then this tells me that there are all your, your C options available to you. And so I'd literally just randomly pick one and say, There you go, I've not done anything in Locrian for a while, I'll pick C Locrian. And so now, having picked C Locrian, I've got my seven notes, and there's my, my C, my F, and my B flat. But what I want to know is now, now that I've got that arpeggio, if I play a C, I'm getting that thing. What other notes can I just press and have the arpeggio still be fully in uh, the scale of C Locrian? And this is where my ARP tab uh, comes in. So if I look down for note 510, which is the interval offset here, these are all the notes I can play and still have the thing be completely in scale. So when I play an F, if you count five semitones up from F, one, two, three, four, five, you get B flat. And then another five semitones up from there. One, two, three, four, five. E flat. E flat is in C Locrian. So the three notes that are played off the F are still in C Locrian. And so I can play those two notes. And everything is in C Locrian. So that's what this like massive numbers is on the ARP tab. You've picked a scale. You've got some offsets that you know are in your arpeggio. These are all the notes that you can play and still be in that scale. So I could have made a much more complex um, sequence if I wanted to. All of that is in C Locrian. So I'm just playing the various notes that are given to me there. Well, I didn't do that. I just picked C and F. And as you can see, pretty straightforward stuff. The modular, because the modular is just octave bouncing, I've got a lot more flexibility of the notes that I can play because I can basically play any note in C Locrian and it's just bouncing um, on octaves uh, for that note. So you can see we've got C's and F's, um, there's a D flat and an E flat, go back, D flat and E flat, they're in C Locrian, all of these notes are. So between those two sequences, we've got this really interesting kind of relationship between the arpeggios bouncing off each other, and I can just jam in C sharp Locrian and everything's going to sound great. Then for extra flavour, we have this uh, contact really quite kind of straightforward stuff I played a I think this uh, this keyboard is mapped to Kales yeah there you go so I'm mapped to the C Locrian scale 
so I can just play the white keys. And I just messed around trying to kind of come up with a, a pattern and we've got this fella. Let's have a listen to that. So that's that. And that's basically, is that all the music we've got so far? Yeah, that's all the music we've got so far. I like the bass line. Um, I've, got, I've got a nice groove going on. There's this kind of, um, a few timing issues. I might try to audio warp it because I felt like I got a nice tone the day I played this in. I don't particularly want to re-record it. So if I can get away with polishing what's there um, and, and making it sound good with just maybe a little bit of audio warp correction I'll be made up with that but all of that's to be determined really it's got a good groove and then we've got the drums so this is this is kind of interesting this is where we started with this was the only drum line I had just bongos nothing else so this is just um, a groove that I came up with bongo pattern and so it, it fits the music really well it's absolutely fine and then uh, a couple of days ago I was messing around in Groove Agent and I thought what if I just throw a couple of Groove Agent tracks in and see how they, re how they relate basically just find something that fits instinctively or immediately so then we add this one so at the moment this is just running in play mode basically so the groove agent is playing a pattern that I haven't even programmed you can see there are no notes it's just playing the same thing over and over again let's bring another one in and suddenly we've got a really interesting drum beat take it off cycle now the bongos do vary, so you get an interest from the bongo pattern being a, an actually complete kind of rhythm section. But I think that's, um, that's an excellent bedrock upon which to build. Obviously, I'm now going to go into those groove agent patterns and start messing around, see if I can find other grooves with those drum sounds that sound good and really build a proper drum beat rather than just something static that's chugging away in the background. Particularly with this, um, when the music kind of all pulls down and the synths have stopped, I want it to be really, really sparse, maybe even just bongos with no other drums there. So this section over here, let's deactivate all the solos, turn them off. That's more like what it's supposed to sound like. So that then as the, the bass comes back in, it's got kind of dynamic range to grow because very shortly it's going to start grooving away. Here we go. So that's the, now you want to bring in some drums at this point, get that groove starting again and kind of build in. The, and the, over this section, I envisage, you know, more drums come into the party until eventually when we get back around to where the synths come back in you know it can be a, a crescendo and we all kick off over here lots and lots and lots and lots and then off we go again loads and loads to develop but at the same time I've got a really strong foundation that you know just grooves away I can listen to this quite happily for quite a while and stick it on loop and just go you know what kind of grooving away on this I like it glad to be getting into something with a little bit more up tempo something with synths in but that's not to say I, I am utterly certain that guitars are going to make an appearance at some point in this I, I, and I would imagine it's going to be some dirty dirty distorted nastiness and uh, that, that should be quite nice so that's all for the future anyway if you're kind enough to subscribe and hit notifications then you'll get notified when the next episode comes out hope to see you then thanks a lot for watching